Hello, this is Joe Hyde with San Angelo Live. I'm here live at the West Texas Legislative Summit on the campus of Angelo State University in San Angelo, Texas. And to my left is Railroad Commissioner Christy Craddock. Welcome to our show. We're, uh, we're obviously, we're, we're streaming interviews as uh, throughout the day. And uh, I think the biggest thing that our audience ought to know is you regulate more than just railroads. Well, actually, we haven't done railroads since the 1980s. <laughs> so we really, I say we're the most important agency in the entire state. We regulate oil and gas and pipelines, coal, uh, uranium, actually. And for for your Angelo State kids who only hear about carbon, we do carb have carbon capture rules and geothermal, too. So I would say we're the most important agency in the entire state. You weren't directly involved in this, but you had a big role in the February freezing of Texas. And we had some, some, some insights and thoughts on, on what actually happened. Because I don't think the, 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 the urban media is really reporting a lot of what happened out here. Um, and I'll just give you kind of like my synopsis of what I've learned on it. Uh, the, the windmills froze, reducing a lot of the load on our grid. They didn't shed load fast enough on the big plants in the urban areas, and they had to shut down. And you can't just turn a plant back on immediately. You have to go through a lot of things. We also had a, a, one of the nuclear plants. I think they lost one of the reactors uh, because of freezing pipeline or right. you know, things like that. What role, or did, first of all, did I say, did I explain that right? About I think that's the basics. So I will say at the Railroad Commission, we don't do the electric piece. That's right. the Public Utility Commission. But we're in the same building, and we were not just working together during that time period, but we're charged by this last legislative session with SB3 to really communicate even better and work together right. even more. So we are in charge of the gas and right. your gas utilities and and getting that gas to make sure that gas flows and it flows safely. So we got uh, the history for from my perspective was the Thursday y'all were already freezing in so West Texas. This, is, you know? this happened on uh, February 14th. It was Valentine's Day. That's right. It was Valentine's Day. Day. <laughs> That's right. It was kind of during so that time the period. The Thursday before Valentine's Day. The Thursday Day. before Valentine's Day we got a call from the PUC. Mm -hmm. uh, they said and we, ha as an agency, are in charge of how the gas flows if there's emergencies, right? right? And so they said, Look. And, and, and just for this, the audience out there, you have pipelines that feed these power plants all over across We Texas. do. So, um, so pipelines, we have 480,000 miles of pipeline in mm -hmm. this state. Right. That's interstate intrastate and gathering lines plus if you've got natural gas to your house that's under us as well okay i bet your natural gas to your house if you've got it it was on right. because we only lost out of 4.7 million customers who have natural gas to their house less than 2,000 had a problem during the storm. So natural gas is reliable, right? right? right. Electricity was the challenge. Um, so we got a phone call from Public Utility Commission. On they, the Thursday, right. On the Thursday before. They do the electricity, mm -hmm. there, and they work with ERCOT, who mm -hmm. everybody may know who ERCOT is after right. this last cycle. Right. And they said, look, we, we recognize we've got a, a storm coming. Nobody knew how bad it was going to be. Mm -hmm. We recognize we've got a storm coming. Y'all tell where gas can flow. Can you look, and we, we call it a curtailment order. Will y'all look and pro reprioritize so we can make sure gas continues to flow to gas power plants? Right. And we went, okay, well, we'll talk about it. And on Friday, we changed and reordered to make sure, one, gas still flowed to your house if you had natural gas to your house. That always goes first. It's safety. It's, you know, it goes to your hospitals. It goes to feedlots. It goes all over. Mm -hmm. That's important. And then number two, we said, okay, gas power plants, if you can get your gas, then we want to make sure that we've got power in the state. So we thought we were kind of going and moving along with I think nobody in Austin always forgets that West Texas gets the weather first, right? Right, right. I weather grew up goes in, from west to east. It does. And yeah. I grew up in Midland, so I always know. And y'all yeah. were already frozen out here, right. frankly, in West Texas. Nobody really recognized that. But on um, Sunday night, like everybody else in the state, my power went off. I was off for four days. So mm -hmm. um, so as we hit Monday and we recognize that, that the power plants are offline and they're having a hard time keeping them back online, mm -hmm. um, 
we're on phone calls on a regular, you know, lots of phone calls during right. this. I, my cell phone was about out. So, mm-hmm. you know, we had one of those, one of those, and, and then we were, we have storage all over the state. So we we're pulling natural gas out of storage and making sure gas, my job was making sure gas was flowing. One, all one over of the things the state. you heard was that our net, our pipelines that carry the valve stuck or something like that. Is, that is they, any of that true? Well, so if you think about a pipeline and you look at a pipeline, a pipeline's underground, right? Mm-hmm. So it's awful hard at, to freeze underground. So we did not have freezing for pipelines that were underground. The challenge we had in some places, if you have a compressor station that it, or if there was some water within those lines, Mm -hmm. water's going to freeze at zero degrees. Um, So there were some issues like that. The other challenge that we recognized that we had, and this is why I love the oil and gas industry, they got us out of the problem in my mind. We got a phone call on Tuesday, or I did, about 11 o'clock on Tuesday morning, and they said, this guy, CEO calls me from West Texas and he says, look, my fo- my pool is frozen solid. I don't care about my house. He meant a swimming pool? Swimming pool was okay. frozen solid. Because they had, you know, he'd been frozen since Thursday. Mm-hmm. He said, but it's now, we've been assessing, we think we're getting safer on the roads. They're now getting out, text dots out, grow, you know, putting sand on the roads. It's right. getting safer for our people to go out. The Delaware Basin, which is way out in Pecos, and even Midland area Mm -hmm. was starting to get to 20 degrees, which was warmer than it had been. And Mm -hmm. they said, we don't have any power out here. And I said, okay. And they said, no, we don't have any power in the oil fields, which means we can't pump up and down. We can't flow water. We can't do anything. If you'll turn the power back onto the oil fields, we can get gas flowing again and get it back into those power plants. Uh, so we got on the phone, started having con- lots of so there, so there was a curtailment of gas going to the... There was a curtailment of gas, but not on purpose because people and even the Public Utility Commission in ERCOD on that Tuesday as we started making calls saying, if you'll get the power back on into the oil fields, we can move gas gas again they didn't realize how interconnected we were right and how important it was they just were like well we didn't know yeah they they thought it was like in south (laughs) south austin somewhere that's right they didn't switch yeah so we got the gas we got power back on by late uh, now kind of hit or miss but but late tuesday to areas that were priority that we knew we could get gas flowing back Mm -hmm. out and by wednesday we were roughly 10 percent flow coming back into the system and if you think about it by thursday we had power back on because the gas was flowing again. So national security and also, I guess, domestic uh, uh, comfort and, and also saving lives. The uh, Obviously, the legislature looked at weatherizing things better. It did, and we are part of that conversation. So SB3 is kind of the lingo in, in Austin right. that, that they've passed this bill. As an agency, we we came in with some ideas right after the storm that we thought would make sense. Part of it was part of is figuring out how to map all this. Mm-hmm. So when you are looking at Texas, it's big. Why would you weatherize everything if you don't know what needs to be weatherized? Because it's costly, number right. one. And two, let's figure out what's where you know does this gas power plant where does it get its gas and how does it what are their contracts look like i don't know what the contracts look like but Mm -hmm. we probably can figure out how they get their gas to make sure that gas continues to flow so we're part of that was our idea was to was to map it uh, did 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 they take your idea they took our idea so as an agency and we came in the other piece that a couple other ideas that we had that they took um we all communicate relatively well you know like every government agency you try Mm -hmm. to communicate we had an we call it an ad hoc group that had been talking and we've had it for years it's now much more formal between the puc ERCOT, us at the Rail commission uh, department of emergency management several other agencies are and company representatives will be on this so if there is another issue we all can communicate better. Okay. I think that's going to be important. But as an agency, we're already working, starting our down the process for this, and it's important for us. One of the things that we're concerned about in West Texas, and I think all over Texas, is the um, is our economic uh, vitality. Yes. And one of the things that was happening prior to COVID was we had a, a, a draft, dramatic uh, reduction. Or, or we needed more pipeline capacity. That's right. What have we done on pipeline capacity from your perspective? So and real, what, what needs to be done? So we've come a long way even in the last four or five years. And, and people think of pipeline capacity and they always say, well, you're not, you don't have enough because you're flaring. That's sort of the, mm-hmm. the bellwether. I don't know why, but that's what people think. There have been some big pipelines that have come th- out of West Texas 
down to the Gulf Coast, whether it's going to Corpus or on into the Houston Beaumont area, mm -hmm. several that have been built. And, and we can tell that as an agency because while we don't get into routing, they have to come tell us where they are. Right. We do safety inspections and continue to have mm -hmm. a lot of conversations with those pipelines. Right. And the other place we can tell is flaring. So before COVID, we were seeing a reduction in flaring because natural gas can only be shipped for safety reasons in a pipeline, right? which is what... You can't put it on a truck or a train. That's right. You have to yeah. put it in a pipeline. Right. So as those pi more pipes are being built, we're seeing the volume of natural gas that's being flared go mm -hmm. down. And so we, in fact, we issued, we, we look at our data and we've been in process of gathering more and better data in the past year on purpose because we want to know what's going on too. Right. What we've recognized in the last three years, we've dropped a percentage every year for the la each year as far as uh, the amount of flaring and we are now and, and so flaring is burning off the burn. natural gas at the rig that's right that's, so, so people that's understand right. that if you if you fly over west texas at night you'll see these flames that's right, right? and that's the natural gas and we want them to have flames over something else because that's it's yeah. better it's safer to do yeah. it that way and, and so. you would you would want you and so instead of burning that nat excess natural gas it would be a lot more a lot more efficient i guess to transport it to market even even at the low prices that sometimes that's correct. And put it to use. That's correct. Okay. So we're now in Texas, we're flaring about 0.7% of the gas being produced in the whole state's being flared. Mm -hmm. That's down from, you know, we were up close to 5%. We're down below 1%. That's how I can tell we've built a lot more pipelines. Right. And I think companies are being smarter about how they drill their wells and what they're doing and being smarter about the environment as well and not wanting to flare. They want to get it to market. It's right. money. Yeah, exactly. There's money there. Well, uh, Commissioner Craddock, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, this is Joe Hyde with San Angelo Live. I've been speaking with uh, Railroad Commissioner Christy Craddock, also from Midland, Texas. That's right. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, the West Texas Legislative Summit ongoing today, sponsored by the San Angelo Chamber of Commerce.